Okay. What am I going to do here? I'm going to have some papers. There are some papers. I've got some ink pads. And we're going to uh, do some blending first, and then we're going to do some stamping. So, to start off, I need a scratch paper. Oh. Here's one. Okay. And I need some blocks. And I have a piece of shimmery white cardstock. Hopefully you guys can see the shimmer in that. It's so pretty. And we're going to do some uh, blending on here. So we're going to start off with our lightest color first, which is going to be the Daffodil Delight. And when I do use uh, my blending brushes, I get a little bit of ink on my brush. And then I kind of squish it into my clear block so that I save the ink, but that I don't have a ton of ink on there at this moment. Because I want to very gently and lightly add my ink because I want to be the one who controls the ink. I don't want the ink controlling me. And if I start off with a big old, you know, pow in your face swipe, um, I can't really fix that. So if you start off with a little bit of ink, then you can always add more. So now I can come over here and I can pull some of that off and then I can continue adding ink so I can get a really nice blend on this, okay? I'm gonna to try to do about a third. I'm gonna go up a little bit, just a tiny bit higher because my next color is gonna be pale papaya and I think that'll blend in with that really nicely. And you see, that way I save the ink also. And not that you can't, you know, re-ink your pad, because you absolutely can. But um, why would you if you don't have to, I guess is my theory on that. So I'm going to bring in my Pale Papaya next. And I have a brand new, this is my very last brand new one until my next order uh, comes in. So, and then here's a block. So we will rub our brush on there and we'll get some of that ink off. And I'm going to kind of start where I left off and I'm going to come across and try to blend the pale papaya. All right. Get some of that on there and now we'll come back over here and we'll kind of pick up the rest. And now I'm going to kind of bring it down a little bit into the Daffodil Delight that I have. Just to kind of really make those look like there's a nice transition. Okay. And I think I'm actually going to go a little bit higher uh, with this than I was originally going to. Oop, I need another piece of paper. Hold on. Because you don't want to like touch where you've already added ink with your fingers because your fingers, you know, they're not that they're greasy and gross, but you know, they're not super clean. And so they can pick up the ink and leave a little bit of a fingerprint there, which you don't want. So keep that in mind. And so that's why I do use a piece of paper. Okay, so we're done with our pale papaya. Well, I mean, we might not be done. We'll see. So now we're going to bring in Calypso Coral. This is going to be our darkest color. And so this is the one that I'm going to be... Um, kind of really careful with because it is going to be dark so you can see I'm getting a lot of that excess ink off there and I'm going to start off my paper first and just kind of get my brush going with the blending so that I don't end up with like a big blob or something because um, it is fairly dark like I said and the key to I think of blending is to have patience you can't just expect to, you know, throw some ink on there and have it look nice. You kind of need to be purposeful about it a little bit. Um, even though it might not look like you are purposeful about it. Is that even a word? I think it is. So I'm going to pick up the rest of my ink here. And again, I'm going to kind of start off. Whoops, pick that back up. And we're going to make it a bit darker here, which this is going to be the top when I get done. So I'm going to make it a bit darker at the top. So I'm kind of getting all of my ink off up here and then I can move farther down where I don't have so much ink on my brush so that I can get a nice uh, fade, blend, whatever you want to call it between the pale papaya and the calypso coral. Okay. Ah, so that's what we have. And you can see the shimmer from the paper kind of working its way through there, which is really nice. 
I see a little right here. I need to get some extra ink. Maybe I'm just going to get a little bit more ink on there so I can make this darker. Because I do want it to be kind of dark up here at the top. Okay. So then all you need to do is just you can rinse these blocks off in the um, sink. And they'll be good as new. I had Elaine says she had to mute me because my words kept repeating. Is anybody else experiencing any of that? I hope not. That sounds like that would be annoying, Elaine. I'm very sorry about that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my Stamparatus because I'm going to stamp some black ink on here. Stamp with black ink, I should say. Ooh, we got some serious glare from my lights. Okay, so I am using the Dragonfly Garden stamp set. And I've got the long, tall image here. And let's see. Oh, I need a piece of the paper underneath because I am going to be stamping a little bit off of my piece of paper, my piece of cardstock here. So I'm going to stick my piece of paper in. Now I need to figure out where I want this. You wish they had lines on their blocks. Yeah, they used to sell these things um, and they don't anymore. And I'm kind of sad about it because I really, really liked them. But it is what it is. Okay, what do I want to do this? I think I want to have it be over on the edge here. So we are going to just figure out. I think I want it to be. Nope, I think I'm going to start over. I'm going to go tall towards the center. Okay, that looks like that will work. So I'm going to get my magnets and have them hold my paper. And then where's my black ink? Found it. And so I've got a stamp case. Oh, gosh, I apologize for the glare, you guys. But it is what it is. Okay, good. Thank you, Amy. So if maybe there was just a glitch somewhere. All right, so I am going to. And the reason I wanted to use my Stamparatus was in case I don't get, like, perfect placement um, on these things that I can stamp it again. And that looks like that's pretty good. Okay, so now... I'm going to move my paper over and I'm going to move it up just a little bit because I want this next stamp to be just a slightly lower. Uh, that should work. So I'm going to bring in my magnets again, hold my paper in place and we'll ink up our image once again. Okay. And sometimes I, I stick my bone folder in there because sometimes the stamps will stick to the paper and I wasn't really wanting that to happen at this moment. So, okay, so now I need to move this over here and we're going to have it go even a little bit lower. So, I don't know, that looks like that might work pretty good. So, oh, whoops, I can't do that because that's where I'm going to stamp it. You can't have a magnet where you're going to stamp something. So we are going to put the magnet over there and then up here. Okay. And we'll stamp this again or ink it up again, I should say, not stamp it yet. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'll stick that in there again. Ah, that looked pretty good. Okay, and then the last thing, last time I'm going to do, I'm going to stamp it right over here on this edge but I'm only going to need just a tiny bit. So, actually, maybe I'll bring it down just a little. So I'm just guessing, you guys. I really have no idea how this is going to look. Um, it's just, it's a guess. I hope it looks good. We'll see. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Okay. Okay. Now we better put some more. Sometimes, you know, you think you have enough, but then you don't. Ugh. Okay. Last time. There we go. Oh, we got just a tiny bit. That's good. Okay. So let me get my magnets off of here. Slide my paper out. Close up my Stamparatus. Cover my ink. 
so I don't make a mess. And then let me get all of these blocks with ink out of here so that I don't end up getting it all over my hands. Now I can see that I accidentally scuffed up here with my magnet, I think. So I am just going to stick this into my little trimmer here and I'm just going to take off just the tiniest little sliver in hopes to get rid of that. Maybe just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more. There. Okay. All right. So then I have some pale papaya card stock to mount this onto. So this was three and three quarters by five. So this is going to be three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. Oops. I think I need to switch out my seal. And yes, I believe that I do. Okay, so we will go ahead and open up a new package, which reminds me, I need to get some more seal also. You know what? Whenever I replace a seal, you know, you don't necessarily always replace your container, but I always rub off. There's always seems to be glue here Get my trash can. And so I like to rub off all of the glue boogers. Look at that. That was a pretty good one. Um off of my case before I put my new refill in. That's just gonna kind of help, I hope, um, so that the glue, or the adhesive doesn't stick, you know, around here. Ooh, look at that, we've got adhesive everywhere. And then I'll do it on this side too. So I'm just kind of pulling it up and you can see you just get those little glue boogers off there. So, and then I'll just kind of rub my hands together and get those into the garbage. Okay. Then we'll just assemble this, put this back together. There we go, that's garbage. And then we'll keep our little lid. All right, so we are gonna add that to this. So I'm just gonna, well, we gotta get it going here. A little more, there we go. So we will get these added together. Ooh, this paper is just, the, sh the I can see the sparkle. I hope you guys can. Sometimes, you know, over the camera, it's not so great, but in real life, it looks really good. It's very sparkly. Okay, so I have that done. So what I also wanted to do was I wanted to take a Wink of Stella brush and kind of splatter this a little bit. So I need a scratch piece of paper. And I'm going to place that on here. I'm going to shake up, excuse me, shake up my Stella and get the lid off here all right i don't think there's a something on there okay and where's my bone folder right here so i am going to get some coming out there it is it's starting to come down the track here and i can see that it is there we got a little bubble there and it's going to filter itself down to the there we go down to my brush and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to like just kind of tap this onto my bone folder. And I can see that there is some Wink of Stella getting splattered all over. And so that's going to do a couple different things. It's going to like maybe leave some little watermarks. Plus it's just going to give it a little bit more shimmer. And who doesn't want a little bit more shimmer, right? Okay. So we've got that. Get this out of the way. Now I probably have some Wink of Stella on my surface here. So let me just kind of rub my hands over it. Ooh, they're shiny now. We'll get rid of that. Okay. Then what I wanted to do was bring in some of this ribbon. Now this is, I've said this before, this is like flirty flamingo, but it goes so well with the Calypso Coral also. So I find myself using it a lot with Calypso Coral. So I'm going to tie a knot around there. And as most of you know, I am not a fan of tying uh, knots on flat pieces of cardstock. I like to tie a knot on something else and then wrap the ends around my piece of cardstock so that they are nice and tight. I like nice, tight ribbons. And so um, whenever I can wrap it around, it makes me happy. Okay, try to get a decent knot there. Trim that off. All right. So the next thing I need to do is figure out what I'm going to do with my for my sentiment. And I think what I'm going to do is there's a little set, a little word in here that says you are an inspiration, which I really think is a really nice sentiment. And it could be used for literally anybody. Um, and I have all these little. Ooh, no, hold on. I just changed my mind. 
I'm going to use a strip of the same um, shimmery white. So I'm going to get a half an inch strip. One thing I really love about this tiny trimmer, and I wish you guys could buy it so much if you don't already have it, because you can get half inch strips so easily. Okay, so I need my black ink back, and I need a block. And of course, I've got my little grids here to help me hopefully uh, stamp this evenly. We'll see. And I hope, I think it, it might not fit on here now that I'm looking at it. Okay, hold on. Ah. Oh, that's close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just going to use it like that. Okay, so what I think I might do is snip a little bit off that end, and then I'm going to flag this. And, of course, you could use our little banners um, pick-a-punch, but I'm being lazy right now and don't want to dig it out. Since, I, like I said, I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do. This is another one of those cards where I didn't really know what I was going to do. Okay, so this is going to go on there. And so I'm going to have this hang off just a tiny bit off of my main layer. So I'm going to try to figure out where. So I can figure out where I want to cut it. I'm going to cut it about like this. Wait a minute. Maybe I should stick it over here and then stick my ribbon no, I'm going to do what I was going to do originally. Okay. I do have a card that you guys can help me with, though, because <laughs> I wasn't prepared. I wasn't ready. I still, my husband's on the night shift, and when he's on the night shift, he has to eat at like 3.30 in the afternoon, and that just really throws me as far as, you know, getting things prepared. I mean, who eats dinner at 3.30, for crying out loud? You know, nobody. And nobody else in my house, meaning me and my son, are ready to eat dinner at that time. So what I'm going to do, you guys, here is I, I figured out where I want my sentiment strip. Then I'm going to put the knot of my ribbon. Um, I'm going to hold it into place where I want the knot to go. And then I'm going to pull this over and I'm going to trim it off so that, that the, the end can go around. Okay. And we're going to put it close to the bottom down here. I think I'm going to scoot it over just a hair. And then I'm going to wrap this to the back and use some tape, which I always do. To, no, my mist just tipped over. Okay. This seems like this card's been taking a really long time. Has it? <laughs> I think it has. Okay, and I'm going to pull that. And then I'm just going to set this, like, right here. So it's kind of hanging off just a tad. And I think what I'm going to do... I think I can use some seal. That should work. That's even early for the early bird special. I know! It's crazy. And when I had both of my kids home, uh, you know, he would eat at 3.30, and then my son would, you know, he would be home. Um, and then my daughter would come home from swim practice at 6, but ugh, they're actually it was actually closer to 7, I think. Um, yeah, it was just, it was crazy. I mean, it's not quite as crazy now that it's just me and my husband and my son, but it's still a little bit crazy. Okay. So we are going to stick this on here like so. And then the final thing is we have these fun artistry bloom sequins out of the last year's catalog and they are so pretty and they go with so many things. And so I think we're going to just add a few just kind of randomly on here. Mm, actually, I think I'm going to put these two together like that. And there it is. The colors, uh, let's see, Rosemary, I've got Daffodil Delight, then Pale Papaya up to Calypso Coral. Okay. So thanks, you guys. That's it. And I guess I could put a white layer on the inside, um, but I'm thinking that I'm, I'm I'm really running late here. I don't know what the heck. I try to only keep you guys here about an hour, and it's going to be a bit longer than that. Oh, you know what else? I did want to do something else, though. I wanted to add some glimmer paper to this, and I couldn't decide if I wanted to. I want to punch out one of these tiny dragonflies. And so we have four papers in here. Clearly, we're not going to use purple or blue. But we could use either one of those. They're a little bit ombre-ish. Not a ton, but a little bit. Or we can pull out the rainbow glimmer paper and pull out 
well, this is a partial piece, um, and maybe get the dragonfly out of here. So I don't know. We're going to try. I'm going to try to get a dragonfly out of here. Is that what I want to do? Do I have any scraps? This is one of those papers, you guys, that I do save all my really ridiculous tiny scraps because you just never know, um, you know, what, what you're going to need. And a lot of times my tiny scraps, oh, look at that. Here's a tiny scrap right here. And I think that might, that might work. So we're going to get that little dragonfly out of there. And I thought we could maybe stick him on here. Now, I don't know. He kind of blends in a little bit too much, but we could stick him up here, perhaps. Right? And maybe we could add one of these sequins to his body. We will see. This is kind of an afterthought. I actually got a swap from one of my team members, and I'm going to show you her swap. It's beautiful. Uh, but I didn't have the stamp set that she had, so I had to come up with something else. I think we are going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to glue it here. And so I had to come up with something else. And so I came up with this uh, stamp out of the dragonfly bundle. Okay, how's, how's that? Does that look stupid? Oh, we have to leave it there now because it took off a little bit of the paper. Okay. So that's what I wanted to do with that. And I wanted to use some of this glimmer paper because these papers are so pretty. So yeah, when you guys have these tiny little pieces of glimmer paper, don't throw them out. I just put them in a cello bag and then I just keep them in my package. So that when I need just a tiny piece like that, then it's very easy. I don't have to cut into one of the larger pieces. Okay.